Oi, Gavna, it's I May Joe, in it. In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby Babs. And I'm Alexis P. Bevels. The P today stands for perfect lip sync. Today we're talking about Drag Race UK. Why did you say that? Huh? We are back in it, in a, in it, in it, England, in it, in, it, in, it, in Wait. Uh, Britain, in it. Do you know England's a different country? Than Britain? Well, Great Britain is like a few of the countries. We do this every season. Listen, I've looked at that map a thousand times and I, it'll never make sense to me. And I'll never look at a map. Well, no, it's a religious thing for her. Globes, however. You know what, speaking of religion, do you yeah. know what I've been watching this week to get in the mood for spooky season? There's a show on Peacock called Chucky, and it's a continuation oh. of, do you yeah. remember those movies, Child's Play? But the you show is cute. The show? I watched, well, I watched season one when it came out a couple years ago, and I thought, well, this is cute and fun. <gasps> Do you know what I watched this week? Tell me. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. You did? I did. Oh, I wanna watch it. Should I Peacock. watch it? Is it it's fun? It's okay. It's Tell me. fun. Okay. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It is a low budget movie, but it is shot really well. Who gets um, shot? No, I don't wanna ruin it for you. It looks really nice. It looks like an actual like expensive movie, but we looked it up and we noticed that it wasn't actually that expensive because I guess they saved money on writers you know the, and actors. You know the thing about that, right? Disney or whoever, it was. it's Disney, right? Oh, I do, the, the, the right, copyright. The copyright yeah. was, was lifted for like a second, so they jumped in and got it to make this movie. Even if the copyright hadn't been lifted, I still think they could have made this movie. It is so batshit. Yes, there are plot holes, but once it starts going, it doesn't stop. It's just like blood, 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 blood. What's and a better, bit of honey. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, too, or Cocaine Bear? Don't, don't even joke. Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear is one of the best movies of the last ten years. Wait, wait, wait. Really? Cocaine Bear was incredible. Yeah, but Winnie not the Pooh all of not it was good. incredible. The stuff with the bear was great. The movie overall, though, was incredible. I was enraptured. I was laughing out loud. I was scared. I was really into the cocaine. And it had actors oh, you I were, recognized. You were on cocaine when you saw it. I got it. Have you ever tried to watch a movie on cocaine? That's a horrible thing to put yourself in. I would be so chatty. I did mushrooms once. We played a very scary video game where Lee were like going through a haunted house. It wasn't granny, but it was granny vibes. And it was really scary and things would like jump out at you towards you. Okay. The we person who whom I did mushrooms with, I feel like that was only a couple of years ago. They're fully like on dead. Instagram married oh. with two adopted kids now. Ew. And they were, I'll say it, a slut when we did mushrooms at their house. Uh, people can be sluts and moms, okay? That's, that's how they become moms. Mm, that's true. Okay, that's Blood it. and Honey. Just watch it with the expectation that it just is what it is and you'll love it. I do want to watch. It's frustrating though. You know when you watch a horror movie or something and the person that you're rooting for suddenly makes a really stupid mistake? Every and you're like, movie. okay, I don't care if you die anymore. That definitely happens. Just watch it. Christopher Robin. Just watch it. Oh, okay. It's, but it's fun. I'm gonna watch it. It's fun. It's dumb. We are returning to Drag Race UK because we love how British everyone is. It's really fun. You know, we've been around the world, I, 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 and we are here now back in the UK. I, I, I. You know, I miss the Queen. I gotta be honest. I, I mean, miss the Queen. I didn't realize how dialed in she actually was to Drag Race UK. Yeah. It, just, it feels different. Like, Charles hasn't really tweeted about it at all. No. And like, well, and I, I guess he can't. I guess Charles fingers. was gonna guest judge, or maybe the Queen was finally gonna guest judge this season, but she couldn't make it because she died. Well, the new Queen, Camilla, asked to guest judge, and they said no thanks. We start the episode with the girls coming back. There's a sweet little moment between Kara and Vicky and Kara, you know, it's like, let's hear it for the winner. And, yeah. you know, and she makes a joke like, that'll be the last time. Then Miss Ginger, who you know, I love, she says to Dee Dee, I think you owe Alexis an apology because you made her feel like she was in the bottom and you misjudged her because clearly she was in the top. I was a little shook. I did not expect that from Miss Ginger. Oh yeah. She got like right in the middle of it. I appreciated it. I really did. And Dee Dee kind of hemmed and hawed, really. And then was it Dee Dee who was like, by the way, 
we all thought Alexis was going to be in the bottom, not just me. And then everyone was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I just liked that Ginger put herself in the middle of that. Like, I love that she saw the producer with the cue card off screen and was like, I'll take this one. <laughs> yeah. Dee Dee, you were a bitch. Yeah. That was fun. And then we get to the next day after Dee Dee, I guess, had slept on it and realized she needed to conclude the storyline. She did apologize to Alexis. I love, there's always that next day apologize because we have to start the week clean. Clean, fresh. Yeah. Ash. Now, the mini challenge was called Let the Cat Out of the Bag, or such as. And yeah. this was a really fun challenge where they were the given a bag. bag they so. played... Um, hot potato. Hot potato. And then a bag had a sign in it. And then they had to assign the bag to a girl. And it was kind of started as something catty. So before we get into this, yeah. I thought we could play our own version of Get the Cat Out of That Bag. So I got this purse. That's my purse. Mm. And I thought we would just... There you go. There's a note in there and you can just decide who it goes to. <laughs> what does it say? I'm a Christian, I can't say it. It says come goblin. Oh my God, oh my God, who would that go to? How dare you? This was a Disney princess purse and you put cum goblin in it. Oh, I this bet some why. of these girls are cum goblins. Look at her lips. Listen, Snow White, she bit that apple and she swallowed the whole thing. <laughs> so they have purses with little names. It's like, who do you think is this person? Who do you think is that person? Which I thought was a funny idea to do this early. It's yeah. episode two. So they don't really know each other other than like yeah. before the show. So I thought that was kind of strange. The winner of this game is actually... Gonna have to go ahead and be... It's actually Tamara. gonna... Ha Tamara... What's her name? Tamara Thomas. Mm -hmm. I want to say Tamara Tooney. She's in Law & Order SVU. She plays the medical examiner. Um, That's a niche reference. Down to Law and Order SVU. -ers. It's not even like she won the game. She just got the bag that said winner in it. Yeah, this entire mini challenge seemed very. It could have been last good. Minute. It could have been good. It was weird. Anyway, she won the, by, what by Rue calls accident. the lucky chew toy, and she pulls out a tiny butt plug. And I just think that is an interesting choice of words for a butt plug because I don't think. Well, I guess your butt chews it. Chomp, 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 <laughs> chomp. I don't understand. Now, I was paying attention, sort of. Do they get to pair themselves up? Because they're doing pet shop materials no. to make a gown. Do they pair up? What did she win? No. And why so did she choose someone? She won the opportunity to go pick something from the material pile before everyone else ran in and got their materials. Oh. And she got to pick one person to go with her. So she picked Dee Dee because Dee Dee has made a bunch of costumes for Crystal on her season and she just knows that Dee Dee is a knows her way around. So she sewer. thought maybe if I let you have this advantage, you'll help me. Exactly. Okay, that's what I was confused about. I was like, why is she? But then it turned into something a little bigger than that. In that Kara was like, I'm your fucking roommate. Why didn't you pick me? She doesn't say that out loud at that moment in time. It does come up a little later. Yeah, later when Rue's doing the walk arounds. Yeah, so that's when she's like, Rue's doing the you walk guys around. Are roommates. Why didn't you pick her? With Edward Enninfold. He's the British. <laughs> British Vogue editor, uh, and he brought his dog, who's named Rue, yeah. after RuPaul. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. That's so funny to me that you go on the show and you have this dog and you're like, I named my dog after you. Yeah. It's just so good. You know what it is? It's Vogue. In Vogue. It's in Vogue. Is that what you're trying to say? No. So they're doing the walk-arounds, they're giving advice, and then, yeah, Rue puts on her producer hat, and she's like, why didn't you pick your roommate? And she says, well, because I've never seen her sew anything. And she said that in front of Edward, who Kara was really excited to meet because Kara's very dialed into fashion. She's she like went the to first fashion black school. editor-in-chief of British Vogue. So she's just, like, so excited, and then... That happened. I can see how Tamara might have kind of panicked and not known exactly what to say. I can see how being in the moment, being put on the spot, you just say the thing that maybe isn't something you need to share with everyone. Or maybe... I wish she had just said, Dee Dee made a bunch of crystals looks. Like, Dee Dee's already made successful looks for the runway. Or if it... Because I wonder if it's this. Tamara doesn't strike me as... She strikes me as very beautiful. So I'm assuming that she's maybe not that smart. So Jesus maybe Christ, you just called her dumb. 
You don't get yours till right. I'm so sorry. Tomorrow seems dumb to me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Maybe what her thought process was is I never physically saw Kara sew a thing because there's no way she yes. didn't see something Caramel made. Even if she didn't know she sewed it, she has seen her. And if Caramel's saying, I've made a lot of my stuff, you've seen it, then stop saying I haven't seen your stuff. Say, well, I've never seen you at a sewing machine. Right. Which wouldn't still make the reasoning any better. It would still be weird, but that's what I'm thinking. Cause why was she so stuck to her guns about never having seen Kara? When Caramel's literally saying, you have, I'm telling you, she you've said, seen. you have, you've just never asked like what I've made. Which is a valid point. I'm on yeah. Caramel's side. I, okay, not to be Switzerland, but I see both sides. I think Kara, that sucked. That really sucked for Kara. Especially when you're right there in front of someone you really Absolutely. respect. I see also how Tamara probably panicked and didn't quite think through what she was saying. Yeah, which is quite... fine. And then they leave and then they continue this fight. I did wish there was a moment, like you said, for Tamara to just say, you know what? I just didn't realize. I'm sorry I said that in front of him. That's fucked up. Well, I didn't even think about yeah, that. And but I... instead it was like, well, that's the truth. You know, right. not even considering kind of the emotional and element she, of it. And she, and Tamara was trying to stay up here. Like, this isn't that big of a deal. I'm just, whatever, and we're on TV, whatever. I don't know. Meanwhile, Banksy and Kate Butch are whispering in the horse's ear what's happening. And yeah. that made me laugh out loud. I gotta say. <laughs> that made yeah. me laugh. That did make me laugh. So they lived together, but she didn't pick her. Did you see Kate Butch? I was wrong. She was wearing Heelys. Did you see? I did. Isn't I did. that fun? That was Fun. I tried to order Heelys in my 20s and I put them on for one day and my knees said no. Oh, I just had, I had one final thing. I thought it was so funny. So Miss Naomi Carter, when they're doing the walk around, she tells Edward, my name's Naomi because Naomi Campbell's my favorite and he's Naomi's best friend. So he's like, <gasps> or Rue said, is there anything you want him to tell her? And he's like, yeah, I'll tell Naomi Campbell what you said. <laughs> like, Let's just go to the runway, right? Let's do it. Let's start with RuPaul. She looks like a slutty Mrs. Mistopheles, and I'm obsessed. I loved it. It looked like her insides Jewels. were metal. She looked like a dame. This out outer velvet, like Auntie Mame, but then the inner makes it young. And the brings front it down. drape right in front of her pussy. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, she looks incredible. And then the gorgeous Yasmin Finney from Heartstoppers and is Doctor Who. a guest judge, and I just love her so much. I so think she's Ruth's beautiful. insides were metal, and her titties. Sides were metal. And it's a great yeah. metaphor to being a woman in 2023 in the world. Because you have to, to be metal. You have to protect yourself. You have mm. to protect your titties at all costs. Protect them there titties. are people out there trying to get at your titties. I never thought that I would be well no, I always knew I was a titty guy. But like now mm. that I have a best friend with titties. Do you wanna see them? Mm-mm. <laughs> no no no. I want the mystery. Yeah. I also, I, I want to wait until your areolas have settled down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, so they had to make their own outfits. We're going to start with Kate Butch. And I got to say, I loved it. I thought it was great. Okay, I thought it was well made. She did, actually, she tweeted out that this was filmed before the designer with like the big animal heads had their show. So I wish that reference had already existed so she could have done something with the head as opposed to just putting it in the bag. Oh yeah. But I know that that's, I mean, that's- a I thought it was funny. I thought she looked like a businesswoman in the Flintstones. I thought it was a really good safe. I thought it was a really good yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah, I just, too. the patchwork animal print isn't my favorite, but I mean, it's Impressive really Impressive well. that it's, she made that. It's very well done, yeah. Banksy looking so freaking cute. I'm this is obsessed with this. It you burp. <laughs> Sorry. It brought up reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, a reaction. That was a real reaction. Thank you. I can't get enough. Yeah. And thank you to Michael Maroli for giving her that fabric because it oh, was meant yes. to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. This is incredible. This is so cute. And I was so excited when she said she's paying homage to Dakota Schiffer because that was immediately what I thought when she walked out. Yeah. The hair, the eyes. Loved. Caramel. She did the feathers. Mm -hmm. I do agree with the judges. I love it from the top is beautiful and yeah. really impressive that she was able to get that silhouette because usually feathers stuff is so bulky. Yeah. But the skirt did feel like a bit of an afterthought. Just the front. I didn't actually have a problem with the back. I like the way it moved, but she looks 
beautiful. See, I thought the skirt, I actually liked the way the front looked on the skirt. It's more the material looked so cheap. I think if it had been a different material, perhaps, or something with some sort of texture. complete her full idea right. of she just She bit off more than she could chew, but the part that she bit off was the parrot's head. Did you know that beaks are actually chewy? They look like they'd be tough, but they're, they're chewy. I know that you don't know that because there's no way your teeth would survive a beak. Yeah, they're chewy. That's how they survive. Okay. <laughs> Ginger Johnson. This was so impressive. Yeah, this was good. Like I know she's already said that she makes all her own stuff, but you never know what that means. This was so good. Yeah. I was a little bummed that she wasn't in the top because I thought the style of it was really cool. There was a part of me, I'll be honest, that when she got to the end of the runway, I thought she was gonna open the coat and the coat never came open. I could see how perhaps that would be a little bit of a letdown. Of a yeah. Uh, yeah, of like, oh, that's a really nice coat, but you made a coat. But I loved it and I love that hair. This is the hair that I think Bettina Polaroid thinks she's doing. She's doing, yeah. Sorry, cross this cross pollination. Alexis St. Pete, she was at a fish <sighs> funeral and they kept talking about her triangle of sadness. That was a pussy. Okay, positive, positive, positive. I like that she saw the simplicity of her look and went, this is gonna be so boring on the runway. I have to do something. Yeah. And then she did, cause you know, goofy. She did goofy. Wasn't for me, but I really appreciated that she did something. Yeah, it was kind she of, told a story. It was kind of odd though, that every time she turned to the side, you could just see her kin mound. There was no panty, there was nothing there. That was really strange. Well, yeah, it's because the slit was too high. Control those slits. Mm. She looked beautiful though. She always looks really pretty. I didn't, and I didn't mind the dress. I didn't either. Yeah. Now Miss Naomi Carter. <sighs> It's uh, <laughs> what I like. Okay, What's I like how happening? they. I like how they said this is iconic. I like that Rue was clearly on one of her coffee enema days because <laughs> yeah. as all the judges are tearing it apart, she's like, "It's so bad, it's good. I love it." And then I started to love it. Well, no, I don't love it. I'm just so confused. But I'm confused how she got there. But we're also so. Char I'm charmed by her. Oh no, I when love her. When she speaks, I'm so happy. Honestly, her it isn't idea, that bad. Well, her initial idea we was get like to the, the, strip. the do rag that was gonna like wrap around her. Oh, that's and really I was like, cool. That's a great idea. So I don't know how we landed on this. Maybe there wasn't enough fabric to make it wrap. I don't know. That's a tiny little strip in front of her vagina. It's more than Alexis had. Thank you. Dee Delicious had cones. I thought this was pretty. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I thought this was safe. I didn't understand why they went up for it like they did. I don't know if like maybe this was a kind of they wanted to do a little redemption moment for her since her first episode and kind of the beginning of this episode was kind of tough for her, but I thought it was fine. Here's what I think. I don't love that the top is black and the skirt and the pads. Kind of wish it was all one because the black to me made it like, I couldn't see what was going on. Yeah, I mean, it's well constructed. Yeah, it is well constructed. I am still having Cone a really top. hard time with her drag identity because that is a 50 year old woman and she is 20 years old. So I, yeah. I'm curious how she landed on this kind of older woman persona. persona. I'm curious to know. At least she had a little bit of a redemption. And so that's nice. Tamara Thomas. Now, here's what I love about this Tamara Thomas. Shit. Well, yeah, it was fine. She does body, and we've seen that, and she's really good at it. She's got a presence like none mm -hmm. of the other girls. I love the way she, to me, gives what like a plastique tiara gives. Like she knows how to make the hair move on its own, and like a wind is there where there was not a wind. I like, did think that she I saw she her hair uses her moving. complete yeah. body, and she's really mesmerizing her body to is watch. Complete. And she looks so striking. Her face is beautiful. Here's the deal, though. Alexis, while they were doing the, the walkthrough, Rue's like, what are you gonna do more than body? We've seen your body. And then she literally comes out in something that doesn't cover any part of her body. It was basically a fancy belt. I don't understand. It shouldn't have worked. The judging. Like they said. You thought it worked? I don't think it works. The judging but I this just episode liked was so she... confusing. She looks great. Do not get me wrong. She looks great. But she wasn't able to cover any parts of her body. And yeah. typically in drag race challenges like this, that would be a really big no-no. I don't know why it wasn't. Other than, like you said, probably her, her presence, her stage presence. I still can't believe this was in the top. I'm sorry. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. No hate. 
No hate. What's the duct tape? And Michael Maruli did like a dress with a big hood. I she thought, thought she there was going to be a big train. Then she changed her mind and made the hood like, oh, the giant hood. Oh, they didn't have a lot of But it did just look like a veil to me. I mean, it's well made. Yeah, it looks nice. It's she looks good. It's fine. Oh, Vicky Vivacious. This is so adorable. This was so good. I don't know. Wait, why was this, this was safe? safe? Tamara's look was better than this. No. Are you kidding? I mean, she had the same kind of issue. There were moments when she'd turn and you could just, you could see her pussy. But I thought this was brilliant. Am I, am I crazy? No, I thought it was so cute. I don't understand. I would have put her and Ginger in the top three over Dee Dee and Tamara. Okay. Their looks were more complete. Well, no, Dee Dee's look was complete. No, Dee Dee's look was good. Dee Dee's look was it just wasn't been top. Yeah, the judging was so bizarre. So then we do top or the winner. <laughs> the winner is Banksy and well deserved. That bitch is tall, yes. and now she's got a badge to prove it. Finally, she can prove how tall she is. <laughs> Congratulations, Banksy. That was an incredible look, and I would happily wear that if you could just take it out a couple sizes, and um, I'll slip into. It. We get our bottom two. Unfortunately, the bottom two are Is Alexis and Naomi. Naomi. We do the lip sync. Yeah. And Alexis is doing a lot. And Naomi is more Naomi to me looked like she was performing at a bar. Like it looked like yes. she could have easily been collecting dollars while she did it. I did think this. And that was my response of like, is she doing enough? I mean, she's great, but Alexis was doing a ton, which was impressive. However, she lost her shoe at one point and the editors like cut in on the judges going, and then it but looked she, like she didn't know the words. But at she one put point. it back on. She put the shoe back on in a really good way. Yeah, I was impressed. I'm impressed too because where you lose me in that journey is if you decide to just take the other shoe off. I think she got her shoe caught in her net when she was twirling, and then she went down in the ground and got the shoe and put it back on. I thought that was smooth. I did too. I liked most of what she did. I mean, when the dress came up and she just had full on Ken body. Yes. Okay. That was tough. That was that tough. was tough. And at one point, and I don't know if. This was just like an editor or something, but it looked like they had done a close up and it looked like she didn't quite know the words because they cut to Rue and Rue's like, so maybe that's what it was. I mean, I don't want to see either of them go, to be quite honest. I was yeah, excited seemed a for little both of them. Premature. But unfortunately, that means we have to say goodbye to Alexis. We have to Alexis. send the, the, the Polish girl pack in. <gasps> Polish packs. From what we've seen from her, I can't believe she's the first out. Although this entire yeah. cast is so strong. That's true. I guess it really is just anybody. But then she makes her joke on the way out. What was it? She did a goofy thing. She was like, and everyone went, uh -huh. I was impressed that Naomi stepped on Alexis's veil that she left and she was in those big clear heels and she stayed up. She like fished her way out of it. Ooh. I was very impressed. So we finally, we finally, <laughs> it's episode two. We got our first person sent we home. We got our first we are, person sent Now we're on and it. That's we're not, in it. Okay. We're and in it. the next time that there's an Alexis on the show, maybe... Send her home earlier. Don't send I her. agree. We are so excited for next week, though. I'm just really loving these girls. I'm I am excited. too. This is a strong season, and I, I love and it. stay strong. The judging, uh, the judging, the is judging, fucking bizarre. Cut that shit out. You had it great in episode one. The judging was perfect in episode one. Yeah, episode two was so bizarre. I don't know. In the words of Joey, it seems like Tribbiani, to break Vicky. Cut it out. We will be back next week with more things that we say. Yeah. So if you Hold want on. To see that, what? Hold the phone. Oh my God, just do it. Darby. What? You okay? Yes. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, you yeah. okay? Well, you know, I feel okay, but I, you just, I feel like I've been working a lot and my time is my home. Go subscribe button and of course the notification and bell. I just, we also are on Patreon. Go to patreon.com so forward slash IMHL show. My time with a bunch with, of like, fun stuff over there. Really like also, we're both on Cameo. So go to Cameo. Really like you can to book do, either one of us. I just or if you want an episode that's just the two just of us mine. with like a background, you know, I, it's like your own I mini really episode, go to IMHLtheshow.com and get yourself a Shamio. And finally, all of our merch is at dragqueenmerch.com. We will see you next week. My Cheerio. coworker, Bunny, she never comes on Mondays, but this week if she doesn't come, I think I'm gonna say, since you didn't come on Monday, you're gonna work on Thursday. I'm gonna take Thursday off so that we can have Wednesday and Thursday, just to myself. <sighs> <laughs> 
so um. oh you know who came in the other day Eva Destruction and um well, who's the one Abora Abora Abhora, and they both came in to the shop, and that was fun. And sorry, I had to protect my piece. Are you done? That's yeah, okay. No, you. The most exciting person came in. You haven't said that yet. Do 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 do. Oh my God! These two ladies walk in, and they go, "Do you have frownies here?" And she I, walked. Yeah. They asked about frownies, which are like, I don't know, whatever. We don't have it. So I said, no, because <laughs> I didn't know who she was. I was like, no, sorry, we don't have that here. I don't like to waste people's time, but I think some people think that I'm being rude. And anyway, and they say, okay, well, do you have this other thing? I was like, oh yeah, we do actually. Just go straight down that aisle. It's going to be on the right. Later, she came up and I was like, do you have a phone number with us? She's like, I think so. And I was, she gave me and I said, no, you don't have it. What's your name? And she goes, Barbara. And I go, last name. And she goes, Eden. And a light bulb went off in my head and yeah. I looked at her and she had said she was an actress and I was like, oh. And then she asked for something else and I, and I like helped her a little bit and she was super nice. Barbara Eden is the original genie in I Dream of Genie. She was the genie. The original? Did they come out with extra ones? Didn't they do a Nicole Kidman one? I feel like they no, were that was always bewitched. doing that. Oh yeah. Well, I feel like they're about, they're, it's bound to happen. I feel like they're gonna any moment now. Do an I, I Dream of Jeannie. Uh, I don't think so. I, I I think it's a little culturally insensitive. I always loved her little lamp. I wanted I I would love a tiny little bottle that I could oh, go yeah. get real small in and like decorate however I want. That's why I have my grandmother. That was awful. She's been dead forever. Don't worry. She read the Bible a thousand times. She was just she was miserable. There was a, a vase in her house that reminded me of Jeannie's lamp. Oh, Jeannie lamp. So when she died, each grandchild got to pick like one thing they wanted to take and I picked it and oh here it is <gasps> oh that is really pretty isn't it cute I have this like dream that one day I'll go on um you know what I used to do with this I used to hide Adderall in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like I'm hoping that one day somebody will see this and they'll be like that's worth like a gym. That's dollars. worth a million dollars. I'm like, finally. But yeah, I liked it because it. I imagine a round couch. Because remember, Jeannie had a round couch. Yeah. And there's like a little lady in there. I used to love to fantasize about what my bottle would look like. Just a lot of pillows and drapes. Okay, so that was I Dream of Jeannie. The next day, this woman came in and she had the same kind of vibe distinguished, fabulous, chic, Hollywood royal. Mm hmm. I was like, not busy, so I was helping her around the store, like finding stuff. She couldn't find something she wanted. I was like, oh, well, what's your name? I'll go find your account and I'll look in your history or whatever. And she was like, oh, Jacqueline Smith. One, of, one of Charlie's died. angels. Did you not recognize her? I did, but I couldn't place her. That's why I was being nice to her. Know. Incredible. I her know. hair blown out oh to perfection. God. Giant sunnies on. Errands. She was wearing the chicest, like, cashmere sweater. Oh. It was back earlier this week, it was fall. Now it's goddamn summer again, and I hate it. It won't last long. One of us won't. I would die. I would die. I would absolutely die. Yeah, it was incredible. Speaking of dead Charlie's Angels, I listened to, as I was doing my makeup today, one of my favorite podcasts, Mobituaries, where Mo Rocca talks about famous dead people and their obituaries. Anyway, he had Anderson Cooper on, and the entire episode was died on the same day. And they talk about two celebrities that died on the same day and how their Farrah, death was covered. Farrah like Fawcett and Michael Jackson. Yes. Yeah. So they open with Farrah Fawcett died the same day Michael Jackson Oh, you did. were going to talk about that. Fabulous. What? No, I just was connecting because I, I knew one. But that's the one you're about to talk about. Yeah, no, no, that was really good. Yeah, so she she died that morning, and then he died later, and so she kind of got shoved to the side because, like, obviously, Michael's a little bigger than Farrah Fawcett. It was just really interesting, and then they, they go on. This episode is really fucking good. I mean, if you're, like, 40 and up. Otherwise, you probably won't get any of the references. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't then. Oh, and then they played this game called Above the Fold, Below the Fold. <gasps> so he would name a celebrity and then Anderson Cooper had to guess if their death was on the paper above the fold 
or below the fold, <gasps> meaning when you have a paper and it's folded in half, like obviously above the fold, just everyone's gonna see it, or is it at the bottom? And wait, will you? Can we play and you you do me and I'll guess? I'll try to remember. I mean, the only one I for sure remember is Judy Garland. Well, that's above the fold, so no. it's gotta be. It was below the fold. New York Times below the fold. Why? Well, the Times. Do you want to hear something crazy though? So there was. Who's a, beating Judy Garland? I don't know, like taxes or something. Anyway, there was a big plane crash. Big, huge. It killed. 9 11. Buddy Holly. Oh. The Big Bopper and Ricky Valley. Valen? Ricky, Ricky Valens. Ricky yes, Valens. They were all in the same plane and Allegedly. it went down and they died. All three of them. Allegedly. So it's like a huge deal that these three giant music people all died in a plane crash. Do you know what was on the front of the New York Times that day? One of the Astors, like the Astors that died on the Titanic, their son had a heart attack and died in his home. So that was front page. Did he just hear about the and Titanic? The, the, yeah, it shocked him. And the like famous musicians dying was on page 19. Isn't that crazy? That is they were crazy, just talking but about, it does make sense. They were you talking about newsies? how, well, yeah, I they were like talking New about York. how like, famous families were always like at the top, like yeah. how it's changed because Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt, you know, his mom is Gloria Vanderbilt. Yeah. And so when so his uncle died, his uncle died in the Lusitania, which was a cruise ship that Germany during World War One sunk and killed everybody on it. It was a civilian ship. It was a huge deal. Anyway, the headline was Lusitania sinks, blah, 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 Vanderbilt dies. Like his name was in the headline just because he was a Vanderbilt. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Anyway, there's a lot of really, really insane kind of thing. Go listen to it. I want to listen to that. Tell Mo Rocca I sent you. Let's go listen I right now. Mo Rocca and I think I w we would get on like pancakes. Is that a saying? No. Toast or whatever. Like white on rye? Why eat my toast. I don't know. Like butter on bread. Yeah. We'll see you next week with butter and bread. Bye. I just think we'd be really good friends. I'd drop you.